Hello everyone and welcome to the second mini lecture in our alcohol unit. Uh, today we're talking about tolerance. I just realized I am wearing my uh, my university garb today, which is pretty appropriate for the topic given its reputation as a pretty extreme party school. But uh, anyway, uh, we're talking about tolerance today. So uh, first off, let's start off by talking about acute tolerance. Acute tolerance is basically tolerance that occurs over the course of a single exposure. So alcohol does undergo acute tolerance. So as you can see over here on this graph on the right, uh, drug exposure effects are greater when blood levels are rising versus falling. So um, this is just sort of a, uh, a graph over time of blood eth ethanol concentration, so BAC over time. So here's when alcohol levels are rising and here's when they start to fall. And when someone might report feeling intoxicated versus when someone might report feeling sober. Um, for whatever reason, the, uh, the mechanisms aren't incredibly well understood, but um, people who are in, uh, on the intoxication sort of rising phase show greater effects of the drug than when they are uh, sobering up. In addition to this, drinkers' perception also undergoes acute tolerance. So uh, people also feel less intoxicated um, when they are sort of coming down after the peak of intoxication. Uh, this can unfortunately lead to uh, risk taking. Um, people might feel sober enough to drive, for example, when their uh, BAC is still certainly uh, beyond the legal limit. So um, metabolic tolerance is uh, another factor here. Uh, if you need a little refresher on the different types of tolerance that we have already discussed, you can go back to the principles unit, the first unit we covered, where we covered um, the stuff in quite a bit of detail. But uh, metabolic tolerance, alcohol, um, is not only broken down by the, the pathway we discussed last time, it is also broken down uh, by the cytochrome P450 family. If you remember uh, our discussion of this family of enzymes earlier on, these are liver enzymes that do a lot of metabolism of a lot of different drugs. So uh, because of that, met metabolism competition can occur, right? Alcohol and various other drugs are broken down by this family. So uh, consuming alcohol at the same time as other prescription drugs, perhaps uh, like sedatives, that compete for competition or that compete for the same uh, enzyme family for breakdown can lead to uh, competition. Another form of metabolic tolerance that can take place is enzyme induction. So this is when regular alcohol use increases enzyme synthesis. So you will see a greater number of the cytochrome P450 family in response to regular heavy alcohol use. Um, this creates metabolic tolerance, meaning that because more of this enzyme is available to break things down, you get more um, degradation of alcohol more quickly, leading to tolerance, so you need more alcohol to reach the same point. Uh, this can also lead to cross-tolerance, right, since cytochrome P450 family breaks down a lot of different things. You might, for example, develop tolerance to sedatives or barbiturates because of, your, of heavy alcohol use, just because there's more of the enzyme available that breaks things down. So. Let's show a little uh, animation of this. So, and here, the little yellow Pac-Mans are uh, the enzyme we're talking about from the P450 family, and the green ligands will be our uh, alcohol molecules. If we have enzyme induction, we get more of those um, cytochrome P450 uh, molecules available, these enzymes available to break down the alcohol. Thus, more of the alcohol is able to sort of be inactivated and removed uh, meaning that you're going to have less alcohol available. Likewise, with uh, cross tolerance, uh, if we only have so much, or competition rather, if, we have, uh, if we're talking about competition for uh, the enzyme activity, we have uh, these two different sorts of ligands. If A is our alcohol ligand and B is something like a sedative, you can see that um, because of competition, you have a decreased amount of um, ligand B, for example, being metabolized, and more of it's going to be available to go and do its thing, just because uh, there's only so much of this enzyme available to break things down. Um, because of that, you're going to have uh, competition and less breakdown. So in addition to uh, the metabolic tolerance that we talked about, we also have pharmacodynamic tolerance, which is neural adaptations to the continued presence of alcohol uh, with compensatory changes in cell function. Uh, we're going to talk in much more depth about pharmacodynamic tolerance. In fact, it's it's one of the focuses of uh, the rest of this unit, as we're going to talk about how um, alcohol works at all these different sites and what changes take place. 
There's also behavioral tolerance, which I think is really interesting. Um, practice with an, uh, intoxication will allow for better adjustment and compensation. So if you're frequently performing the same sort of activities while you're under the influence of something like alcohol, you do get better at it. Um, and this isn't just an effect of getting used to being under the influence, it requires practice. So in a study that your book talks about, um, rats were uh, made drunk with alcohol injections and then um, uh, allowed to cross a balance beam. And uh, those rats that were allowed to practice on the balance beam while intoxicated significantly improved their performance. Whereas those rats that were just allowed to practice on the balance beam while sober and then injected with alcohol after they performed the task did not improve. So it's not just exposure to the balance beam. It's not just exposure to alcohol. It is being able to have the chance to practice the balance beam while intoxicated. So it's not just one or the other. It is uh, the behavioral tolerance comes from being able to practice something while intoxicated. Uh, though there's also another side of this in which classical conditioning can play a role. So one of the uh, effects of alcohol is um, vasodilation, right? So you get your blood vessels to expand, which can cause some flushing and also causes um, hypothermia, right? You're losing heat more quickly, so your body temperature drops. So you can get a conditioned response to consuming alcohol uh, in which you have a hyperthermic response to compensate for the temperature drop. So your actually body temperature will raise uh, to compensate for the uh, upcoming uh, temperature drop from vasodilation. Uh, and what we found is that this is a conditioned response. So uh, in, in response to getting ready to be administered alcohol, you can see an actual uh, hyperthermic response, a raise in body, uh, rise in body temperature uh, in anticipation to compensate for that hypothermic response. So um, that is our mini lecture on tolerance. So I'll see you next time.